Unlike traditional fencing, which creates a physical barrier to contain or exclude an animal, electric fencing works as a psychological barrier. So they get a shock when they touch the wire, and that shock isn't a safe but memorable shock that they don't like. So that keeps them from wanting to touch it again or force their way through that, that fence. Because electric fencing is a psychological barrier, it allows us to use a lot less infrastructure to get the same results at the end of the day. So our cost is a lot less to do the same job. It also allows better control for things like rotational grazing, like you know, I want to break a field down and graze it in strips. Electric fencing is a tool for pasture management. It can also be a tool for excluding or including livestock or wildlife as well. You take like a bear for example, a bear can just climb over most physical barrier fences. Yet if we put just a wire on there with electric shock, which the bear doesn't like, and now the bear won't climb over that fence. Some of the main problems that we see with electrical fence installations, um, probably the number one is, is earth grounding. They say 80% of the systems out there are improperly or inadequately earth grounded. So there's two posts on most energizers. One is usually red, one is usually green. The red is the hop that goes out to the fence. The green is the ground side that goes down to a ground rod and then that closes the circuit through the ground. Now if I don't have a, an adequate grounding system, like, a, like if I just have a chunky piece of rebar or something there that doesn't conduct very well, I'm not making that connection well. The other thing is we have to size our ground rod array or our antenna based on the size of the energizer we have too. So a good rule of thumb is about three feet of ground rod for every joule output on your energizer. So I have a 15 joule energizer, I'm looking potentially at about 45 feet of ground rod in the ground. Lots of times to check your grounding system, a quick easy way to do that is to just take your digital voltmeter and test your ground rods. It shouldn't read more than 0.0403 of a kilovolt. If you're reading higher than that, that's a good indication that you don't have a good grounding system or a good grounding ground. There is some situations, it, it's ground dependent. Like if you have very sandy, gravelly or rocky ground, those are all ground types that are poor conductors. So if your ground is not a good conductor, you may have to go to a, what we call a positive negative system where you're actually taking some of your wires on your fence, hooking them to the ground rod side, and, and then your other wires are on the positive side. So when an animal comes into contact with both those, that positive and negative wire together, that will close the circuit, and it's not relying on the earth as the return wire. Another big one that we see a lot is improper lead out cable. I've been to a lot of installs where people have just taken a piece of household electrical wire and hooked that up to their energizer and ran it out to their fence. The problem is almost all household or even industrial wiring is only rated for 600 volts. With an electric fence you're putting five, six, ten thousand volts through it. So initially that wire will work but very quickly that high voltage will actually break down the coating on that wire and it will cause it to leak. So if I'm across wood, okay, it might not be a major issue, but if I'm touching a metal building or it's going through a metal building, it's gonna short out my system very quickly. When you're sizing an energizer, one of the things you have to consider is vegetation weed load on that fence. So if you think of the electric fence line as a water line and the, the energizer as the pump, it's pumped that line up to a high pressure, so when an animal comes up and touches it, it's like getting a squirt of water. There's a high pressure that it gets high. Same with electricity. And each time a little piece of grass is touching it, it's like a little poke hole in the water line, and it's slowly allowing water to leak out. So the more grass or the more vegetation or weeds that are touching it, the more leakage I'm gonna get to ground, because the energy, the energy wants to go to ground. As I get more and more leaks, my kilovolts come down and that 
that squirt or that shock becomes less and less um, to a point that I may not have a good enough shock. Animal type can also play in a factor on your energizer requirements as well. Sheep and goats can be harder to shock. They have smaller hooves, so they don't ground out as well. Um, sheep have wool, which is harder to get through. Um, same with deer, they have hollow hair, which is harder to get through. So those animals do require a larger energizer. Surprisingly, larger animals like cows and horses and even elephants are actually easier to shock because they have bigger feet, which is a bigger surface area, and, and they ground out better. Um, even bears actually ground out very well because they have these big soft paws that are on the ground and generally they touch stuff with their nose, so that usually helps as well. Electric fencing can be a very simple process once you understand how it works. Um, if you're unsure, if you've never done electric fencing before, um, be sure to go on to our website, fencefast.ca. We have lots of good information on there. Or you can reach out to, to one of us at FenceFast and we'll be glad to, to help you go through what the best fit for you is and, and what you may require for your application.